Hello there YouTubers. I'm going to try to make a movie explaining the sawmill. A couple people, a few people have asked about kind of the history of the sawmill. So I'm going to kind of tell a story. I can't measure up to Mike McCoy's stories. Nobody I don't think ever will. We miss him. But anyhow, here's the story of the, the mill you've been seeing running. That's a picture of it right there as we speak. Let me get a little pointer out there. Um, I went. I was looking for something else up in Pennsylvania, a steam pump. I went up and got the steam pump, and this guy says, "Well, I want to want to sell you this, and I want to sell you that. What else do you need? What else do you need? What else do you need?" And after he listed a bunch of things, I said, "You know what I'm looking for?" I said, "I'm looking for a sawmill." And he says, "I don't got one of those," but he says, "There's a guy. I don't know, half a dozen miles from here. You go down here, over here, go around this, this, over the river, through the woods." When you're coming around there, you'll be coming around a big corner. When you get to the big corner, there's a red barn there. He says, that red barn is where that sawmill's at, a guy named Felix. I said, okay. So I packed up everything I got. I got the steam pump, I'm heading down the road. And I'm going over the river through the woods, around the corner, this, that. And all of a sudden, I pass this red barn. I go, that's the red barn. I back up. When I back up, I pull in the driveway. And uh, there's a guy sitting there. It'll show up in the picture a little later. Um... I said, I'm looking for a guy named Felix. He says, yeah. I said, you know Felix? Yeah. Are you Felix? Yeah. I said, I hear you got a sawmill you might be interested in selling. Yeah. You think I can take a look at it? Yeah. He walks me over and that's what he showed me. Right there, what's in the picture. So, now I'm sitting there. I, I took a few pictures of it before I took down. These are pictures from a long time ago. So, I'm going to do my best to... So here's another picture. Um, I don't really see any sawmill stuff in that one, but it's in there. It was in an old building that came down, the roof came down. I don't even know which one's up on this one. Here it is. I think this is from the back side, and you can start to see here the receiver handle. That's about all you could see in it. So I, and I sit there and you know I talk to the guy how much you want for it and all this kind of stuff, and he says, "Well, I turned down." I was offered a thousand dollars for it. I, these things are so. I'm trying to figure which way's up. I think this this way is up. It's hard to tell. Yeah, that way's up. Over here, you can see the. Re I don't know if you can see it there. You can see the the handle there. Um. So some of these are a little. They're hard to under hard to see. I'm putting them in. Okay, I think this is looking at it from a different angle. There's the handle again. Uh, anyhow, I'm looking at this sawmill. And he says, well, a guy offered me a thousand dollars for it. And uh, I said, I think that was before the building came down. He says, yeah. There's a taper handle right there. And that's just miscellaneous stuff. Here's another one. Uh, that might be the set works handle there this is another picture of it here I'm kinda of going trying to go through fast so I don't have a totally long movie here's another one here well anyhow I told him I said uh, well I'd be interested in it at eight hundred dollars I crawled underneath all that stuff to make sure it said frick on it and sure enough it said frick on it and I didn't know anything about sawmills is about thirty years ago and I said if it says frick, I'll take it. But I didn't know anything about sawmills. There's the set works. This is an old circular saw blade that they cut the um, slab woods. Here's a here's a bed. Here's a bed. Here's a bed. There's only three bed. It cut telephone or um, ties, uh, railroad ties. So about a week later, I called him up. I said, "You going to sell it?" And he says, "Yeah." So I made a trip up there, borrowed a tow truck, borrowed a trailer, and load up a bunch of tools. Now you can see, this is after hours of cleaning up. Here's the saw blade. Um, that's the circular saw. Here's a, here's a bed, here's a bed, here's a bed. And I'm just sitting there going, hmm. Here comes up another picture. All the wood was rotted on it and gone. Uh, here's, here's the blade, 52 inch blade. There's, you can see the, the husk here. And, the track. Here's a uh, power receiver right here, which I didn't want a power receiver. I knew enough that I didn't want a power receiver. Uh oh, I dropped my pencil. 
Here's Felix's wife. She's taking some pictures of it. That's after I cut the um, husk. The mud seals weren't any good. I'm reaching down here getting my thing. The mud seals weren't any good, so I just cut cut those off. It, it was just, and this is the coupler that you see on my mill today, right here. That's that's the coupler that you see it when you see it running. Here's a, here's a piece of track, just showing. There's there's the uh, power receiver right here. Um, got that out, loading it with a loading it with a pickup truck. Here's Felix next to the saw blade. That was about 30 years ago. He wasn't no young guy then, so I'm sure he's probably passed on by now. But the sawmill's still running. I loaded it on the trailer. Still a one man band back there. There's a piece of track and some some other track and stuff like that. And here's a picture of the engine. This is the radiator. That was on the second trip up there. It was about a, a two or three hour drive. Here's the radiator. Let's see, where's my pencil? Here's the radiator now. It was a Buick Straight 8 engine that come out of a hearse, he said. So it's probably low mileage, but it was stuck and it was no good. And I later on just junked the motor. Couldn't couldn't find any collectors that were interested in a straight Buick, straight Buick eight. There it is sitting there. I guess getting ready to get put on the trailer. That's the tow truck that I borrowed. Here it is, all loaded up. I know I took two trips up there, but it looks like there might be some sawmill parts down in that section there. That's that was the uh, flat belt that ran it. I, I guess there's a way there because there's a thing. I might have made it in one trip, but I think. I really don't think I did. That's what it looked like after I got everything out of there. I, I don't see that other saw. It was over in this area. Anyhow, that's what it was. <clears throat> and then when I got it home, this is this is the sawmill. And my little girl standing on the saw blade. That was about 30 years ago. Uh, can't get the pictures out from time to time. Then I decided where I was going to put it, and that's where it sits now. That's kind of how I laid it out, going figuring out this is this is how, where I want to put it. And this is a picture of starting to put in a million telephone poles. I put a lot of extra telephone poles in the log loading area because when you flip one of those three or four thousand pound logs over, they just hammer in the ground like a rock. There's a wall that goes across here, then it comes back here where the sawdust pit is, then it goes that way, and then this, these two here are for the end of the um, mandrel. And there's a few angles of it here. Here's one, uh, the back side of it. Here's, here's the section where the um, sawdust pit is, and the end of the, end of the mud sills would come to these two, and then there's two rows the whole way down. Here's another one, everything covered up. I guess it was raining. It looks like it was fall. Here's that uh, coupler that's on there now. Here's a piece of track. I don't even know what's under that. It's been so long ago. And another one, um, the Great Wall of China almost. Here's a generator, big old generator, which gave me power back there to, to do all the work. I did a lot of working at night too. Here's uh, another picture. If you see here, all this front, all these front poles are tied together with great big five-eighths straps or bolts. They're actually bolts out of telephone poles. These are all telephone poles that I acquired. Here's uh, another section. Here I'm, I'm starting to fill in the sawdust bits over there, and then there's another poles here. Then these poles go out that way. And there I am starting to backfill it. Here's another picture of it just getting backfilled. Here it is in a lot of pieces, a lot of pieces. This was the husk and there's some track there and stuff like that. It was in my greenhouse where I could work on it in the winter. So I uh, had heat and could tear it apart. Here's the husk getting redone. That was all tore apart and any place that was rotted was cut out and replaced with new good wood. 
And here it is on the going together. That was a 48 inch saw that I didn't like. Didn't saw worth good. I think it was a left handed blade saw. I don't know. It did not come with that mill. It came with another mill. I, I had bought another mill. I don't know if you can see the set works there. The mill that I got from Felix was an old style set works and I wanted the new B style set works. Here's a picture. Some of these might get a little out of order now. I got tired of putting a tarp over the motor. At this point I had a 271 Detroit running it and I bought that cat that camper that was gutted out at an auction for five bucks and that worked as great as a motor cover for years. Oh and that one there you can see all the posts that are under the track on the outside. There's another set of those posts on the inside. So one, two, three, four in just the load area, loading area. Here's uh Another one. Since then, I've taken this board off because it just splashes too much mud. You can't get to the guides to work on them. You can see the rack and pinion there all cleaned up. Everything, everything cleaned up and ready to go. Here's one. I must have a different saw blade on it because I got some boards, boards there. That's where that is. Here's another one. Uh, just the back. You can't quite see the the 271 Detroit in there. Here's another one with a bunch of logs on, on deck. Okay, and saw and then I'd throw the slab wood in the Jeep back there. Here's a real nice one here. That's uh just it just looks good. That was all together before any of the roofing was going on. So that's it. I'm gonna do another one of these maybe tomorrow. This is 12 minutes. That's probably enough. I got through the whole round of pictures of show and tell number one. I'll do another one show and tell number two. Over and out for now. Bye.